Kemba Walker's time as an NBA starter and possibly even as a rotation player is over. Just two and a half years ago, we were all arguing over whether or not the Hornets should give him a max contract, and now his career is basically done? How did we get here? Welcome everybody, my name is Tucker. Thank you for clicking on the video, by the way. I really appreciate it. As we go back to the beginning of Kemba's career, he was part of what I've called the weirdest draft class in NBA history, the 2011 NBA draft. That was a class that included Kyrie going first, a ton of busts in the top 10, Klay Thompson going 11th, Kawhi going 15th, Jimmy Butler going 30th, and Isaiah Thomas going 60th. But right at the end of the top 10 between Brandon Knight and Jimmer Fredette was Kemba Walker. A small scoring guard out of UConn that had become a bit of a college basketball superhero because of his limited size but incredible knack for hitting clutch shots. And he was fresh off of an MVP performance in the national championship game, a UConn win. Walker was the kind of prospect that in decades past likely would have gone much higher in the draft strictly because of his college production. But as an older prospect they came into the league right when everything was kind of shifting more towards the focus on the three-point shot that we now know things were a little bit unclear in terms of walker's fit at the nba level it seemed like everybody wanted him to do well as a player but we didn't really know if he would well four all-star games and an all nba selection later it's safe to say that things worked out pretty well for the ninth pick in that draft and frankly now's kind of the time to go ahead and put a bow on kemba walker's career with the knicks and him coming to an agreement that he will step away from the team for the remainder of this season and with Walker's play over the last season or two being a clear indicator that his time as a big time NBA player is over. Which sucks because he was a really, really fun player for a lot of years. Walker's game, even going back to his college days, was always predicated on his explosiveness, his quickness, and his scoring instincts. There were question marks about his ceiling as an NBA player, how his size would limit him specifically defensively, and his inability to make shots from three, but he overcame all those things to become a really good player. He became a top scoring option early on in his career, and it was immediately clear that he belonged in the NBA. He was never going to be an MVP candidate or anything, but his ability to create offense on the ball was exactly what those Charlotte teams needed. However, because of his size, he really struggled with his efficiency early on. That had a lot to do with how much he was asked to do offensively and the limited spacing and offensive talent around him. But in pretty much any scenario, if you're going to be a real legit number one option, the expectation is that you're going to shoot better than 40% from the field. However, there was some excitement around the team in the 2013-14 season. Kemba's third in the league as him and Al Jefferson led them to the playoffs, just the second playoff appearance for the franchise since Charlotte was was brought back into the NBA in 2005. With Jefferson making an All-NBA team that year and some interesting young talent around him and Walker, things seemed to be looking up until they weren't. Jefferson's production fell off the following year, the team got much worse, and the future of Kemba as a top-level guard was seriously in question. He was seen as a nice scorer, but not a true two-way option, nor an elite-level scorer, which really made that 2015-16 season a pivotal one for him. He began his new contract that year, a four-year, $48 million deal that was pretty on par with the production that he was bringing to the team. But that year turned out to be a huge turning point for Kemba. He became a much better three-point shooter, both in terms of efficiency as well as volume, and that changed everything about his game. With the added threat of off the dribble threes and the pick and roll, his quickness became even more of a weapon, allowing him to get to the rim and to the mid-range much easier. And that mid-range part of his game was already a huge strength for him, even going back to college. His production spiked, the Hornets finished tied for the third best record in the Eastern Conference, and he really established himself as one of the better guards in the conference. The team never reached that same level of success again while he was on that contract, but it really didn't have much to do with Kemba as he continued to be a really, really productive player. They passed on players like Bradley Beal and Damian Lillard from Michael Kidd Gilchrist in 2013. That would have been a really fun backcourt combo with Walker. They took Cody Zeller fourth in another weird class in 2013, in which they could have gotten CJ McCollum, and also, by the way, Giannis was in that draft, but a lot of teams passed on Giannis. They went with Frank Kaminsky ninth in 2015, with Devin Booker going a few years later, and by now you get my point. To have multiple top 10 picks in a few year span and get those guys out of those picks certainly isn't ideal. Even if they hit on one of the two top five picks, no disrespect to Zeller, who's had a solid career, things could have been drastically different for Kemba in the beginning of his Hornets career, slash Bobcats. But even through all that, he became an all-star, he made an all-NBA team as well, and solidified himself as one of the best Hornets draft picks of all time. And interestingly, as I will get into later, he was incredibly durable during that four-year stretch for Charlotte. He missed a total of six games across four seasons from 2015 to 2019, making him a true Ironman in a league that was 
really going against that kind of model in the regular season. Which leads us to the summer of 2019 that I hinted at in the intro. At the time, it seemed like a foregone conclusion that the team would be willing to spend big to bring back one of their best players in franchise history. He was productive, durable, he'd been underpaid for years, and the team being bad really didn't have that much to do with him. However, that did not turn out to be the case at all. The team was concerned about some chronic lower leg injury issues, and that made them really hesitant to sign him to a big contract. He was eligible for a much bigger max from Charlotte than he could have gotten anywhere else, but they were pretty determined to not pay him that. In free agency, there were some really intriguing options, including a place like Dallas, where I thought he would end up, who were chasing a star to play alongside Luka Doncic. They even went after someone like Chris Middleton, but ultimately, Walker's free agency destination was a pretty big surprise. Prize. The Hornets decided to move Kemba to Boston in a sign and trade in which they got Terry Rozier in exchange. It was a pretty shocking move at the time simply because there weren't really a lot of examples of a smaller market team letting their all-star level player go like that. Their thought process was that they could get some value back for Walker in the form of a young player like Rozier, not be on the hook for a big contract for an Asian guard with injury concerns, and try and create a high ceiling team within the next few years. And in hindsight, it was absolutely the right move for Charlotte in the long term. Rozier has been really good since and importantly has been more available and cheaper than Kemba would have been in that time. Meanwhile, Kemba ended up in Boston on a team that suddenly had all kinds of free agency spending to do after Kyrie Irving and Al Horford left them in the same offseason. It seemed like a really good fit. They could just replace Kyrie's spot in the lineup with Kemba and really put themselves in position to maybe make a deep playoff run once again. The Walker-Brown-Tatum combo, although not as exciting as what they'd had in previous years in Boston, looked like a solid trio that could lead them to a decent amount of success. And at times, Kemba was really good for the Celtics. He provided shot creation alongside Brown and Tatum, was a pretty good spacer, and felt like a really good fit within Brad Stevens' offense. However, pretty quickly it became clear that he was not going to be worth the big contract that he signed. The injury issues that had concerned the Hornets really started to pop up around this time, and he just had a lot of issues staying on the floor. Going into his second season in Boston, there was some optimism that with the offseason, he'd have time to rest and fully recover from his injury but he didn't even suit up for the team until the 12th game that year, and even when he did play, he wasn't particularly effective. It was a really worrisome situation for Kemba as well as for Boston. He was barely available, and he clearly wasn't the same player. The injuries had really taken away the quickness and the explosiveness that had formed the foundation of his game for the entirety of the time he'd been in the NBA. He could no longer get by his defender nearly as easily, didn't have the explosiveness to create space off of his jump shot, and the lift on his jump shot, especially from three, really started to fail him as well. Despite some optimism at times, the Kemba Walker era in Boston ultimately was very short-lived. After just two full seasons, the team decided to make a change. In the 2021 offseason, Kemba was traded to the Island of Misfit NBA Veterans, also known as the Oklahoma City Thunder. And even though that was essentially a salary dump move for Boston, there was still some optimism that Kemba could rest up and become a good NBA starter once again. The idea was he could go to OKC, either get a buyout or get traded to a new team, really have some time to fully recover from the injury issues that have been bugging him the entire time he was in Boston and come back and be a really good player. Ideally, a team that desperately needed the perimeter creation that he could provide. And that's exactly what happened. The Knicks signed Walker to a bargain contract to give them a jolt of offense that they desperately needed. Fresh off of a top four finish in the East the prior year, followed by a playoff series loss that made it clear they needed to upgrade their backcourt, the Knicks were really excited to welcome a player with the scoring instincts that Walker provided. By signing him and Evan Fournier, the Knicks really felt like they'd upgraded their backcourt in a way that would allow them to continue to go up the Eastern Conference standings. Unfortunately, it's pretty much been a disaster from the start, which leads us to where we are now, with the career of Kemba Walker very much in question. He was never able to get into any kind of a rhythm in New York. He got torched defensively, and to put it plainly, he looked kind of washed for most of the season. And honestly, we probably should have seen this coming. If any team in the league would have been motivated to pay Walker big money, it would have been the Hornets. They weren't a great team by any means, but Kemba meant a lot to that fan base and was one of the only things preventing them from being one of the worst teams in the entire league. And the fact that they were scared to give him a big contract should have told everybody else to stay away as well. I understand that Boston was desperate to replace players like Irving and they had the cap space to spend, but in hindsight, it's really not all that surprising the way that the last few years of Kemba Walker's career have gone. He's now become yet another example of something that's been pretty consistent throughout the history of the league, that smaller guards that rely on their quickness for a lot of their production do not age well. Once they hit 30 years old, there's often a huge drop off and Kemba proved that once again. There are some exceptions, most notably whatever magic Chris Paul has going for him, but that's just what CP3 is. 
an exception. Walker's time as a starting NBA guard is over, and even that might be a little bit too kind. Maybe if he hadn't been such an Iron Man for the last couple years of his career in Charlotte, things could have been different. But he simply doesn't have access anymore to the quality that made him such a great player in the first place, his quickness. Not to mention the fact that he simply hasn't been available enough over the past few years. It's been really awesome to see his career play out from an underrated draft prospect because of his size to an all-star and an all-NBA selection, but unfortunately for Kemba Walker, it's over.